Welcome to part 2 of my beginner series on 2D platformers in Unity. If you missed part 1, there's a link down below. Outside of installs, we set up the project and imported all of the assets. Basically the game dev equivalent of filling out your job experience when you've already submitted a resume. It just has to be done. In this part we're finally going to get some programming done and learn how to move our character and get them jumping. So let's get to it. Let's create a folder for our scripts and then create a new C Sharp script that I'll call Character Motor. Some people like to use Character Controller, but I like to avoid Controller for a number of reasons. After it's created, we can double click it. If you're a good listener and followed my previous video, it should open up Visual Studio. So for this video, I won't be getting into the basic concepts of programming, and I'll make the assumption that you have some understanding of C Sharp fundamentals. If not, there are plenty of resources available and you can learn what you need to know for this video in less than a day. I will, however, cover stuff specific to Unity or Game Dev, and anything that might seem complicated for a beginner's knowledge base. I've said my disclaimer, so if I catch you in the comments complaining, oh boy, I'll take away your Game Dev license. Or something. I'll tell Todd Howard about you. Getting started, we want our character to move, so let's create a variable called want move. In most games this would be four directional, but since we can only choose to move the player left or right, we just need a single plus minus value. So we'll use a float. We'll then make a vector 2, which is four directional, called want velocity. We'll use this to store any queued up movement up, down, left or right. Finally, we'll make a public float called move speed, which will let us control the speed our character moves. We'll default this value to 6f. The F tells the program that we want this number to be able to use decimal places. While it's not necessary for whole numbers like 6, it's cleaner for floats, and I'll quickly show you the compiler having a cry session about it not being there. I'll just leave it at 6.0 as a reminder. With the character selected, we can now take our script and drag it into the inspector window. This will attach it to our character object. A quick little tidbit about why we made the move speed public. Public variables allow us to modify the value in Unity. We also defaulted the value to 6, so if we were to reset the component or create a new one, it would start at 6 again. By default, Unity will start us off with two functions, start and update. The comments explain what they do, but just so you know, update is tied to your game's frames per second, which is why a lot of games limit that. We'll set our want move variable in update by checking for player input here. Since it's called every frame, we'll never miss a button press. We'll use Unity's input class and grab the horizontal axis. We can customize inputs by going to Edit, Project Settings, and Input Manager. We can find our horizontal axis here as well, and see that it's tied to left, right, and the AD keys. Since it's an axis, it's designed by default to simulate a controller thumbstick with its gravity and sensitivity settings, which means if we hold down D, our character will slowly accelerate towards the right. For platformers, you want tight responsive controls, so we'll copy the values from the jump input so they act similar to button presses instead. Bonus round. Every keyboard input has a gamepad mirror. For instance, jumps is set to joystick button 3. We can change that to the A button instead. You can also rename inputs to match your game, or delete any you don't need to be cleaner. So that's basically why we wrote horizontal here. Since our character already uses physics for gravity, we want them to move the same way. We're going to store our character's rigid body 2D that we added last video. To do this, we can make use of Unity's getComponent function. GetComponent by itself will be able to grab any component from the same object this script is attached to. In this case, both are attached to our character. You can also get components from other objects, but we'll cover that later on. To help ourselves down the road, we're going to make a new function called move, where we can handle all of our movement logic. Here we can finally put that lazy want velocity to work, and make it equal to whatever we pass in multiplied by our top speed on the x-axis. And since gravity controls our y movement, we can just use our rigid body's y velocity for the y-axis. Back in our update, we can just call move and pass in the want move variable we stored before. Next we're going to use a new function called fixed update. It's a function automatically called by Unity, similar to update, but instead of it being called every frame, it's called every time the physics updates which could be more often or less often, depending on your project settings. Since it's a Unity function, it's paramount that you write it the same way I have, capital F, capital U. It's also very good practice to only use this function for physics code. 
So here we're just going to set our rigid body's velocity to our want velocity variable that we've stored and calculated outside of our physics step. Now we should be able to smash that like, I mean play button and move our character around. If yours isn't working, you can always go back and see if you missed anything. I keep my videos short for that purpose. If you're super lazy, first, congrats on making it this far. Second, I keep a downloadable copy of the code in the description for you to cross-reference if you need it. Before we finish up this video, let's get a rudimentary jump working. We'll make another public flow called Jump Force, which sounds like a 90s kids cartoon, but we'll actually control how much force our character jumps with. We'll default it to 250, but it is public, so we can change it as we test. I'll show you an example of that in a bit. We can now quickly tie it to the jump input using Unity's input check for get button down. Jump is defaulted to the space key unless you changed it earlier. We'll wrap that in an if check and add force to our rigid body on the y-axis to the measure of our jump force. Although this is physics, it's safe to add force here because it won't be applied until the next fixed update. And if you have any questions, the add force function does exactly what you think it does. Pressing play, we can now jump, but you'll notice our 250 jump force isn't much of a jump. Since we made Jump Force public, we can pause the game and change Jump Force on the fly to something like 400. And look at that, we're exactly like that famous video game plumber, Luigi. Something very important to note is that changes made during play aren't saved. As you can see our Jump Force has been reset back to 250. So be careful playing with variables or just write them down. That's gonna do it for this video, we got the fundamentals of moving and jumping down. But in its current state, it's very bare bones and a bit buggy. In the next video, we'll take a look at colliders and keeping our player on the ground. We'll also add a bit of flair to our movement. Until then, cheers.